Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We're going to get started in just one minute. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the new product lifecycle, strategies for successfully building and managing a thriving connected product. My name is Alex Kurgan. I'm the head of marketing for ReadWrite Labs. Uh, we are the leading research and intelligence platform for the Internet of Things. We provide industry research through our platform, uh, as well as visibility for, for new IoT products and events through our newsletters. Uh, we also provide cust uh, primary customer research for a vast community of subscribers who are often the decision makers in the IoT space. And we provide our partners access to a network of subject matter experts and other part platforms, uh, sorry, other partners. And our platform uh, tracks a, a lot of different companies across many different industries. So uh, we're looking at the IoT economy from the perspective of smart humans, so smart health, smart homes, et cetera digital transformation, mobility, the customer experience, as well as infrastructure. And we create uh, landscape maps of all of these industries with all of the top players and, and new technologies in the spaces. Uh, and you can check those out at readwritelabs.com. Uh, today, we are going to be focused on a new kind of product lifecycle uh, that is demanded of us as we deal with connected products. And we're going to look at some of the challenges that business leaders are facing, um, as well as uh, how these connected products are probably transforming the industry that you're in. We'll look at how to successfully deploy connected products at scale. And then we'll also look at how Aero, Microsoft, and eInfoChips, all of our partners for this webinar, can help you do those things. Uh, helping us on our journey today are two uh, wonderful experts. Uh, the first is Parag Mehta. He's the Chief Business Development Officer um, at eInfoChips, which is an aero company. And he has global responsibility for business development, strategic partnerships, and sales through partners in aero channels. He brings over 25 years of experience and a unique 360-degree global experience in product marketing and management, business development, strategic partnerships, global R&D roles as an entrepreneur and a professional with Fortune 500 companies. Uh, to self-funded startups as well. So Parag has a lot of experience. Um, along with Parag, we have L Luis Benito Matias Ijea, who is a systems engineer with over 22 years of experience in the IT industry, including 12 years at Microsoft. He has worked as a developer, a consultant, systems engineer, product manager, an enterprise architect, and a partner technical architect. And his, his specializations are in hosted services, private and public cloud. And he's currently the Microsoft IoT Principal Solutions Specialist in the Global Channels organization. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to Parag. Thanks, Philip. I appreciate the intro. Uh, I will move to the next slide. Uh, Hi everyone, uh, very nice to speak with you. So what I'll start with is, you know, what we have been hearing from our customers that we have been servicing uh, in terms of what are the challenges that are faced by our customer base. Uh, and what we are hearing within the connected devices, uh, why it is no more, no more about just the challenge of connecting devices through Wi-Fi or ethernet or uh, other connectivity solutions, but the challenge is more about you know, keeping pace with innovation and driving the costs down so that there is large adoption of IoT and connected devices. The disruption both from within, uh, this is causing my disruption from both within the industry itself from known competitors, as well as, you know, the new business models that bring in completely new set of competitors in the space. Uh, the, the classic example of the Uberization 
uh, within the capital goods is what is being referred here as you know the challenges that are faced there. The customer expectations for new features, new upgrades, new devices uh, is is at a pace which is unparalleled uh, from the traditional enterprise. When we look at connected devices, the user experience, the user expectations from the Gen Z uh, audience is, you know, having feature sets and new releases coming very, very rapidly. And that time to market pressure kind of increases uh, the, uh, you know, need for better connected devices and the ability to manage remote devices in a very different fashion. So moving to some of the other business models that are changing, you know, in, in jump, in, if you look at even the business models that are changing for the traditional enterprises, as you look at connected devices, uh, there is the micro architecture or the micro payment structures also coming in for pay as you use kind of structures, the hybrid models of instead of having one time license fees on software to moving to a very SaaS based model on a subscription model is what is changing. And these are driving some unique things uh, in connected devices. And we have some customers, for example, that might have home security cameras that now don't, don't look at the device as the, the end mean, but how can they have the customer engage uh, on those devices and have that subscription model so that they have repeat revenue from that customer base. And these customers, as they look at it, you know, the pace at which they are wanting to get new feature sets is is at a different pace than a traditional, you know, non-connected device would have. Uh, so, you know, as, as you use, if you look at it, you know, what at a device instance level, at per, per hour usage level, can there be larger capital equipments also that can be leveraged from pay per use point of view, and also on the software side, if you look at it from a SaaS model, those are models that are changing, evolving, and that's what our customers have been demanding of us to be able to deliver that through the IoT frameworks that we help them develop for the connected devices. Here are some examples uh, that I wanted to touch upon where we have really helped customers with connected products and to help them transform their entire business. Uh, we have multiple sets of customers within say the warehouse management system uh, to all the way to retail and different industry segments. And I'll touch upon some of those, what we have done in these cases and how customers are changing their value prop to their customers, either by reducing uh, the costs, improving efficiencies, uh, and helping them engage in a much, much a better way with their customer base. Whether it be forklifts uh, uh, that are connected forklifts, which can be leveraged on a pay-per-use basis, to loading bays that have various sensors so that the loading bays, uh, you know, you are tracking which loading bays are empty, not empty. Uh, the packages itself have RFID tags. So you know which packages need to be picked up, the prioritization that has to happen there. Uh, within that segment, you know, vision-based AI and ML technologies coming in uh, and, you know, helps you to detect objects, helps you to de detect, uh, you know, uh, various uh, uh, recognized uh, objects itself through the vision-based AI. Uh, natural language processing is another piece that is coming into all these devices, whether it be natural language for communicating back to the computer where warehouse operators are wearing uh, wearable computers that can communicate back to the, you know, as the orders are coming in, uh, or just talking to the devices through voice command, uh, you know, voice command integrations and things of that nature. So those are things within the warehouse automation. Similarly, you know, within devices, uh, integration of chatbots and various automation processes within devices help to reduce and bring operational efficiencies there. Uh, that is another area of, uh, you know, a lot of development that is happening in that area. And if you look at from a retail store fund point of view to the warehouse, uh, back-end warehouse, there is a lot of dig digitization that is happening, connected cameras that help you to create mesh networks within a retail storefront to help you to look at uh, the consumer behavior, 
help bring in operational efficiencies through you know uh, various scanners that are provided to the consumer as they walk into the storefront triangulation of where the consumer is spending time provides intelligence on where the customer's interest is where they are spending most of the time uh, you know in 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 addition to that uh, you know camera technology is helping to uh, build uh, for example point of sale lines if there are too long of a point of sale lines to send alerts to the store manager to open up new pos lines as an example uh, price tags uh, uh, price labels that are there in the storefront all of those connected so now there's no more paper price tags that need to be changed in the storefront from a central location when there are changes uh, to a certain price tag they can be done through all of the stores of the customer. So those are kind of transformations that are happening in the marketplace uh, and what we have been able to deliver to some of our customers in that space. Now, what when we look at connected devices, the definition of connected device is no longer about you know, just having the Wi-Fi and internet connectivity. But connected products, by the very nature, has to be a bi-directional interaction. They are products, assets, and other things embedded within like processors, sensors, software, and connectivity that allow data to be exchanged between products and environments, whether it's the manufacturer, or operator, user, and other products and systems. Smart connected products offer exponentially expanding opportunities for new functionality far greater reliability, much higher product utilization, and capabilities that cut across the, and transcend the traditional product boundary. The changing nature of the product is also disrupting value chains, forcing companies to rethink and retool nearly everything they do internally. These are the type of products uh, alter industry structures, and the nature of the competition itself is changing now. They are reshaping the industry boundaries and creating entirely new industries in many companies. Smart connected products which will force the fundamental question, you know, even the fundamental question of what business we are in because it's changing the business value itself through connected devices. With that, we can bring up the first poll question uh, or I can move, yeah. So the, if we can have a first poll and uh, participants can please uh, uh, review this in terms of how will your organization benefit from capturing the data from connected products. And there are it's a multiple choice, so if you can please pick what makes sense for you. Thank you. It looks like exploring new business model is the top. Uh, streamlining operations, enhance the customer experience. Okay, good, good to know. The so customer experience and new revenue model, revenue stream seem to be the top, top of the list. All right, so moving to the next slide. Uh, one of the reasons what we have seen is, you know, when customers undertake projects on connected products, uh, it's underestimated. The effort is completely underestimated because of the complexity, the skills, and the retooling that is required within the traditional organizations. Uh, it, it requires expertise and skills from all the way from sensory data the device engineering side of it, uh, which could be in a traditional organization be existing. But when we talk about, you know, integrating it with various communication protocols, you know, whether it be Wi-Fi or Zigbee or Bluetooth or all the different networking protocols that need to come in, BACnet and, uh, you know, M MQTT and others on the operational technology side and bringing that all the way to the IT side of it, that kind of transcends different layers and that is what you know, sometimes breaks uh, the traditional organizational strengths internally uh, within that. So as, as you evolve through this, uh, and, and most importantly, you know, the security, you know, piece, security has to, uh, you know, go through all the layers 
of of the uh, uh, the stack here and that is an important piece whether it be device security network security communication security cloud level security so end to end security is also often overlooked at times and the second piece is doing a poc versus doing a production level product is a completely different ball game and that requires a different mindset uh, and a different level of maturity and thinking so what we have experienced through this is uh, uh, it is very important for a staged approach uh, when you're developing a connected product life cycle and it requires that the definition and goals are measured they are measured twice and then cut once kind of a philosophy and the product definition product development is taken systematically through an alpha beta stage and the poc side and then bringing it to deployment and the architecture all of this while the architecture has to be extremely scalable has to be taken into the case the first step is to move the conversation from taking just about connected products to talking about connected products that can be very specific to your organization for example the utility company may be focused on connected products and enable you know a grid initiative and how to improve the performance of specific assets like transformers versus a healthcare company might be talking of a very different use case as an example in terms of business value getting the specific question answered on what the connected product has to deliver is extremely important for us to understand up front and then what is the level of scale that we are talking about what are the various interoperability uh, that would be required through the systems uh, within the organization and bringing that is very important here uh, as we transition from a product from the bu side of the business to when you transition the responsibility to the it side of the business uh when when you go at scale so this is another piece where we feel that you know lot uh, of organizations uh, underestimate the connected devices have to trans, uh, transcend both the operational technologies and it technologies side of it and bringing that from ot to it and ability to cross that chasm is extremely important being able to talk to that sensory edge talking about the automation that is required there the kind of protocols that are required at the gateway level the intelligence device the uh, edge analytics that are required in the ot side of the business bringing that data to from south of the gateway to the gateway from gateway to the cloud and then helping develops you know all of the analytics the big data analytics the dashboard the visualization and making meaningful sense out of that sensory data and then helping that integrated within the it systems and it organization lot of organizations that we have seen can talk one side or the other side but when it comes to being able to talk both sides that's where they they need help and that's where we we uh, uh, as arrow e infochips have helped in and stepped in and helped organization in this this area so just a little bit about e info chips and what the organization has been built upon uh, e info chips is a division of arrow electronics uh, it we provide engineering design services to organizations both from a device side as well as digital side and hence being able to cross that chasm that, that i referred in my previous slide we have been doing that for over 20 years now a team of over 1700 engineers of which about 1200 are iot trained engineers or uh, helping customers build connected devices and we have been doing that uh, uh, you know for uh, various organizations from mid sized companies to you know large fortune 1500 customers uh, at a global scale uh, the teams are spread globally uh, us emea and india based and that's where we bring a lot of value there and we are uh, infochips is a gold partner with microsoft and have microsoft azure certified engineers uh, that we bring to the fore and when the kind of services uh, ot to it is where here's an example of what infochips is able to offer uh, 
uh, is truly from the device side, from a silicon engineering side, we have engineers that do ASIC engineering work at the silicon level, physical design, DFT kind of work. So a lot of the embedded processor companies is where we, uh, we help customers to build those embedded processors, bring, once those processors are built, we help to build, build reference designs for those customers, so hardware design, and, uh, you know, board design work, mechanical IDs to complete the device journey, help with the prototyping, help with the manufacturing certification that are required for from a product lifecycle point of view. Once the product is developed, helping that connect to the cloud and then helping bring that data uh, completely from a capturing, integration, analyzing, and then visualizations uh, through it and making meaningful sense out of it and all the other applications that go around it, whether it be web application, mobile application, big data application, or you know, cloud managed services is what the organization offers. I see there is a question that popped up uh, in terms of what uh, OT stands for. OT is operational technology, uh, uh, which is at, from the sense, if you, can, if you look at it in another way, is from the sensory edge to the g gateway, uh, the, the, you know, what is on, in the factory floor, typically, uh, or on the field is what we refer as OT. And then once the data is in your data center and the IT side of the organization is consuming that, that we refer as the IT side of it. And that to being able to cross that chasm is what we are referring as the OT to IT uh, chasm. So once again, you know, very important piece that we have learned through our experiences and multiple, you know, customers that we've engaged and customers that have you know, stalled after POCs and not been able to take it to production is to slow down at the beginning of the product development cycle. And what we, again, I will reiterate what I mean by doing here is to measure twice, cut once. There are many product development frameworks that are available. What's most important in IoT is that you really focus on defining the strategy and the business model correctly upfront because these are all kinds of downstream challenges that will arise if you do not if you do not define it correctly upfront. So, what business outcomes are you trying to achieve first? Then design the business model around it. There are three to four business different models that you can choose from. The business models you settle on will drive the requirements around what you, your backend needs to be, what the analytics applications need to be, what your hardware needs to be what kind of scalability you would need in your infrastructure. Doing a benchmark within the organization, what does the business model mean from different resource requirements? Uh, does that meet, meet the different organizational be, uh, you know, leaders and stakeholders requirements is also very important to bring in the various stakeholders in the business. From there, you need to follow the typical new product development framework from that point. Uh, and I think IoT is, fairly complex and you cannot just you know bring products and think that it will connect and help you to bring those solutions together we have to think about the device we have to think about the erp system how we are going to bring that data to make meaningful sense and how we are going to scale to that so that is an important element here and if you again i will reiterate this that create your iot vision create the maturity level that you would need to scale up to prioritize within that and how does it how does this all work so based on the business objectives what are the devices you will need do you have to design a brand new device or can you take it is there something that is available off the shelf uh, that you can leverage from the marketplace what is the information that you're going to go and track and measure on this uh, devices what are you going to going to connect to these devices to and what kind of cloud infrastructure would you need to connect this to what do we need to do in terms of information gathering uh, and the, what are the automations and rule sets and insights that you want to come and collect this is what microsoft input chips and arrow come in to help our customers we do business transformation workshops uh, for our customers first to help them to you know put the architecture and the thought processes together. And this, this business transformation workshop actually puts the entire uh, you know, framework together, 
of what we need to achieve from a business outcome point of view and this helps a lot on the uh, you know success on an ongoing basis so with that i will uh, you know transition it to louis uh, and you know take take it from here louis hello good morning good afternoon and thank you for connecting us today uh, this is luis benito matias and as you know already i work for microsoft as well we collaborate very close with our info chiefs as well uh, so i'm here to to talk to you about uh from from microsoft perspective um how we can help because we've we've heard today and probably you already know that uh, these IoT projects, we see a lot of value out of them, okay? And we see that there is a big opportunity for all of us, for the business. I saw the results of the uh, of the poll uh, about um, that many of you are looking for new business models, new revenue streams, okay? So that's just by by connecting the, the devices, we have a, a lot of information that is coming out of them, so we can create very good uh dashboards and take that those insights um create meaningful actions as well okay so there's a lot of opportunity just by connecting the devices of course if you are creating or adding new devices you can include this opportunity as well uh this connectivity okay so and and here uh Parag has been mentioning some samples and, and here we have some other real samples and and is is impactful seeing how mm, these IoT projects can really impact on the businesses in in many senses uh, and, and for example here we have la Johnson's control where where they connected the chillers uh, in in uh, any man, uh, manufacturing facility and they 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 are able to to uh, come back online those those chillers nine times faster than uh, any other equipment that is not connected, okay? So we are avoiding, in this case, uh, big downtime costs in, in those customers. Uh, so that, that's one of the uh, improving operations, uh, the scenarios and, and benefits that you can get out of connecting this, just by connecting these devices. And here you have the comparison, okay, between the connected and unconnected equipment. We have in other areas as well, like farming in this case, in agriculture, where we are able to control and be informed uh, the farmer and inform the farmers about when to irrigate and control diseases or uh, or how how to fight the pests. So in, you see here the benefits on reduction in water use, in increasing yield for 30%, 20% reduction. So there's very important benefit. And finally, uh, we have the Rolls Royce sample, okay, where they are able to create new business models, asking one of your uh, questions or, or uh, in the poll, okay, because they, they create, they employ power by the hour model, okay, so basically they are able to, to they sell engines as a service right now. So they are able to make the, and uh, like, minimize the fleet disruption due to maintenance or, or, or unplanned downtime, uh, which for many airlines and, and uh, <clears throat> is super important in, in these cases of the utmost importance. And at the end, Rosroy is using this IoT products, and in this case, the uh, Microsoft Azure platform to, to transform how they use the data to better serve their, their customers and at the end maintain its fleet using predictive analytics okay so we will see that some of the benefits of just connecting these devices we can amplify those benefits through uh, using and enabling some services that are already in our in the platform okay so at the end we have here that uh, how how we do this you you heard a we know the scenario, we know the need, okay? So uh, how um, how we really accomplish this, uh, this opportunity, okay? So um, Microsoft has an, a specific platform, okay? Uh, that can help the customers, uh, any of you, to implement this type of solutions uh, very fast, okay? And that's what we are going to see right now. 
So let me ask you uh, this question now. It's time for for the second poll. Uh, how many? This is what you will need, or uh, if you see the value and opportunity for connect just by connecting these devices. How many IoT devices you have now, or you are planning, or you would like to connect to the cloud? Okay, so you can select any of the um, uh, of the options, and then we can analyze the results. Okay, so here we have the the, the results so far. Um, there is a good number of uh, devices out there that um, many of you, as you can see, uh, would like to connect. Okay, so here we are able to. We want to show you how you can, in a in in an easy way or the fastest possible way, to connect those devices to the cloud and and again starting to uh, leverage the benefits out of this. Okay. Again, there is this platform which we call Microsoft Azure, okay, which is a platform that will allow us to implement in an easy way, faster, in a fast way, in a secure fashion, etc. Uh, this type of of devices, okay. Let me um, show you how in the next uh, minutes, okay. So first of all, we are recognized that Microsoft platform is recognized as the first hyperscale IoT cloud solution provider, okay. So, so the the main uh, research companies are already positioning Microsoft Platform as one of the leaders in in this space. So there is a lot of uh, learnings that we have uh, in out of working with a lot of customers. I show you three, but here you have even more more customers in different across all different industries that are leveraging these capabilities again just by connecting the devices. So how, how Microsoft Azure Platform can help you in this journey of connecting the, the, these devices, moving, transitioning from the OT to the IT that Prague was mentioning. So the Microsoft Azure Platform can help you being more productive, okay? We are able to help you uh, accomplish this digital transformation that we, we talk uh, about modifying our operations or connecting in a different way with our customers, creating these new business models or, or even empowering and reinforcing the work and uh, productivity of our employees. Okay, so thanks to the services that are available in this platform, it is a cloud platform, so we'll allow you to um, leverage these services without you having to have the expertise the investment on, on all the hardware needed and the capacity needed, it is already deployed in the cloud, okay? Uh, so we are able to help you to transform faster, uh, minim maximizing the developer productivity in any case. It is secure and well managed for IT. In terms of hybrid, uh, which is one of the key differentiators, as Parag was mentioning many times, you need some of these capabilities as well uh, and capacities sorry on the edge level on the device itself so so this is one key differentiator of the microsoft platform which is it allows uh, you to use whatever of the uh, devices the protocols that you are using uh, uh, including legacy devices that are not yet iot enabled okay so by connecting these devices you can collect analyze and gain insights from untapped data that can be used to improve your business and operations, okay? As I was mentioning, we are able to deploy some of the cloud logic that we are that we can implement. We are able to deploy it as well that logic at the edge level at the device, so they are more autonomous and we don't depend on uh, without constant connectivity to the cloud. And, uh, and that will allow scenarios where you can connect those devices only when, when needed and so you reduce the amount of, of data you are sending to the cloud and therefore lowering banding, bandwidth costs, increasing privacy and security of the IoT enabled devices in the edge, okay? On the same way, we have this intelligent cloud and devices. What it means for that is how we can create intelligent analytics to uh, predict future outcomes. And this is super interesting. And remember that at some point I mentioned that we can get a lot of benefits just by simply connecting the devices to the cloud. And one of these benefits is around analytics. So how 
very rapidly in uh, we can see that data and create meaningful insights for your business for example uh, as i was mentioning at the beginning our rolls royce so it's able to uh, reduce the maintenance costs because they are pre proactively identifying when something needs to be uh, repaired before they have a problem in the in 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 the engine in this case okay and and they are being able to implement some optimizations models that allows the customer uh, carrying fuel fuel usage for example in this case by the way as you saw one percent of fuel usage is could save more or less two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per plane per year okay so so just by implementing this intelligent analytics we get a lot of value okay um, <clears throat> and additionally how can also we use this intelligence in the iot solution to light up new scenarios for example uh building spatial intelligence into the solution you can track and map important assets like for example fleets of trucks okay and, and enable better asset management in this case okay but all of these uh couldn't be done if it's not done in a trusted and secure manner okay so uh, and this is key security is of the utmost importance for all of us okay we are we have seen the 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 recent um attacks and security uh breaches that that we see uh, in uh in the IT market as well, uh, so so it's super important how we are able to protect these IoT uh, solutions, and and additionally how can we really how can we really um, provide enough and and the the right privacy and data protection for our customer data? Okay, so we can comply with the regulation. So one important thing is how we can securely provision and manage the IoT devices from anywhere uh, so we can stay in control of the data and devices in a secure and automated device provisioning system okay that can scale across a billion of devices i've seen some of you answer the previous question uh, talking about uh, more than a million of devices so yes this platform is robust enough secure enough and trusted enough so you can really in a secure manner provision and deploy and manage all these millions of, of devices, okay? Uh, and only Microsoft has the enterprise experience and offerings you may need to innovate and build these IoT solutions for success of the business uh, because they are within, because of the experience that we've been having for more than 30 years working with enterprises and the security, uh, um, scenarios in the enterprise and in the industry so we have a lot of experience that, that we are already implementing and even uh, learning from the uh, the scenarios and customers that have been in the late in the latest years like including these iot solutions okay and securing your it is always a concern so just by connecting these devices uh, an asset you also need to think about securing your operational technology the ot part so it's not only on the it side but as well on the ot part okay so with azure iot will help you to maintain uh, the integrity and security of these devices and data and so you can have peace of mind in this case so at the end what we see is uh, the confluence between between these two worlds what we call the intelligent cloud, where we have all these services that are already pre-built. You just can consume them, okay? And by the way, you don't have to uh, buy a lot of hardware, which is a lot of uh, capex that you don't know where when you really are gonna be able to uh, to uh, uh, to need these resources if you need to uh, upgrade those resources or uh, um, scale up these capacities. But as well, uh, you have the intelligent edge, which, as I mentioned, where you can really implement many or some of these services and capabilities at the edge level, at the device level. Okay, so that is one of the big uh, differentiators. I have here a sample. Uh, in this case, it's Decent Group, the company that man, uh, 
manufacturers elevators okay so they they uh, were thinking of how to evolve and transform their uh, maintenance service okay so one of the things that they needed they were having problems with the maintenance service because uh, customers were complaining because uh, the downtime the uh, it was very high in in some of the elevators and for this and crap uh, the operational costs of providing this maintenance uh, it was too high as well um, they they implemented some type of uh, like um, preventive maintenance which means hey every six months um, I don't care if the any of these parts are working or not, but I will substitute them. I will change them because maybe it's part of the utilization life and uh, it's getting to the end. But even though it's working, I will replace it either way. So, so it's costly uh, in many cases as well. So one of the things that they decided is, okay, why don't we leverage Azure IoT technologies so we are able to uh, integrate, for example, some intelligence capabilities like artificial intelligence. Okay, so we are able to reduce the cost of maintaining the elevators because, hey, at the end, we have all these sensors on the elevators. Uh, we can just connect them to the cloud, gather the information, and we know because we have that experience that any time that one of these sensors is going up, for example, the temperature is going up to a specific threshold. Uh, above a, a specific threshold and this other thing occurs, etc. So the majority of the time, of the times that this has happened, we have had a downtown, a down, uh, a problem with that elevator. Uh, so we can predict and identify when these situations and patterns are occurring again, and we leverage the cloud capabilities to automate the action and response on this case, okay? So in this case, they created a new business model, a new managed service. So they create this dynamic maintenance service. So uh, they charge a monthly fee to their customers and they use these technologies. They have like a centralized dashboard where they can see how uh, any elevators that are under a contract for them for this service, uh, how they are working. Uh, they created a dashboard where the customer can see uh, how their elevators are working. They see energy uh, optimization models, so they increase efficiency. They see how much is the utilization of the elevators, so they can um, get some insights and improve the utilization of them and re while reducing, the uh, again, the energy that uh, it consumes. And in the time, in the case of ThyssenKrupp, they were able to have a centralized view of all the elevators that they are managing. So, so they were able to, uh, to uh, plan in advance any service they need to do. So, so they reduce as well the cost. Customers were happier and ThyssenKrupp reduced cost. And by the way, they increased the revenue because they create this new predictive this, this dynamic service, which allows them to have new revenue stream, okay? So again, this is one of the things that many of you are looking for as well. And that's the way we can leverage the uh, Azure, Microsoft Azure technologies. In the case of this and crap, they <clears throat> went to the next level. So whenever they are uh, maintaining any of these uh, elevators, um, they connect the engineers in the field with some subject matter experts in the moment, okay? So they they, they don't have to uh, move and, and travel. The experts, they don't need to travel to all the different places. So remotely, they use HoloLens, which is some kind of uh, glasses that provide mixed reality capabilities. So at the same time that the field engineer is looking at the elevator, they can see in this, in this uh, online in the in the screen uh, so mix with the reality, okay? Uh, all all what they need to know about maintaining and repairing that elevator, okay? So so uh, super interesting opportunity about how to not only create new re new business and revenue streams, but as well uh, how they can uh, reduce the cost, uh, leverage the talent that they have without incurring in a lot of costs, okay? 
you can you can see many of all of these cases in in our Microsoft. If you look for Microsoft Azure IoT, you will see a lot of these cases, and we will give you some references as well. Okay. So how do we do that? And what is this of the intelligent edge uh, that I mentioned? Okay. So sometimes we have the cloud where we have these services, where is the IoT hub in in the Microsoft Azure platform? Okay, where we receive the information. Uh, from the devices, we get those insights that I was mentioning before, and we may, maybe we can react with a specific actions, and these actions go back to the edge, to the thing, to the device. So, so it, it really create the the action. Okay. So the cool thing of this hybrid approach is that what happens when I don't have that big, that good connectivity, or I need some times of. Uh, to, to be offline, okay, and I need some kind of autonomous capacity at the edge device. So one thing we can do is those insights and actions, we can containerize them, okay, and we can move them to the device itself. So it is autonomous, okay, and it can reproduce the same com uh, behavior, but at the edge level. So that is the, that increases the value and the benefit of this type of solutions. You can do both. You can do leverage the cloud, and whenever you cannot or is not necessary, so you reduce the bandwidth cost, etc. You are autonomous at the edge level. Okay, so that's part of what we, what, of what we call Azure IoT Edge. And we have some other scenarios and uh, of. Uh, of this, uh, so for example, uh, where Schneider Electric, uh, they were maintaining uh, these oil uh, and even gas as well uh, fields, sometimes remotely. Okay, so so they created this remote management solution, where where it's not only um, responding to real time situations, but now they they have the capability to uh, to execute and apply some artificial intelligence in the cloud or at the edge, okay? So they are able to, um, whenever they have remote fields that they don't have good connectivity or they want to reduce the costs of communication, they can deploy and again, in a containerized way, they can deploy those capabilities at the edge level, okay? So very good samples and we have many other, okay? So uh, I think Prague, um, you can continue Thanks. Thanks, Luis. Thank you. So, uh, on this one, one of the things as we talked about, you know, once you define, uh, so before I move on, let's do this polling question in terms of where are you in the journey uh, of connected devices? Uh, have you already initiated this? Are you just exploring this? Uh, uh, and where are you in the implementation phase over there? If you can please pick one of the answers that would help us. Give it a minute. All right. All right, looks like you know, a lot, of, well, about fifty close to 50% are in the exploration phase. Um, some of them have implemented in POC phase. Okay, that gives a good view. And yeah, 17% are taking it to production. So yes, as you look at the business value uh, of this and you know you define how uh, that they have been validated, the business value has been validated, then it's time to move to the implementation phase uh, and to for production rollout. Typically, this begins with a stage rollout. You know, we have seen that uh, in many cases, whether it be with specific product lines, uh, or start with certain geographies, or you know, take a set of beta customers, uh, 10, 15, 20 customers, and then roll it out. The early planning for organizations and process transformation during this pilot phase prevents issues later. Eventually, the solution will be fully rolled out uh, across all geographies and all users. This often requires uh, a lot of scale and acceptance from various stakeholders, from various customers, but it's very important to analyze uh, and improvise on an ongoing basis as you build this solution. Uh, so as as we will look at, uh, you know, wherever you are on the stage, so if you look at this, this is how Microsoft 
arrow and e info tips kind of comes together wherever you are in your journey whether you're looking at a completely a cloud based uh, engagement or uh, edge uh, and cloud based infrastructure whether you are hardware software what your mix is whether you're looking at a completely a saas based model or a managed services model uh, you know this is where we can assist getting started faster we bring certain iot frameworks and a lot of azure iot accelerators to the table this helps you to you know remove some of the hassles of creating from ground up design leveraging a lot of the things that we have are done and they have been you know field proven and baked uh, in terms of the maturity of that and they are now being deployed at scale we can help you to leverage some of the solutions that are already there and already deployed in the broad market uh, and azure iot provides uh, almost everything that you need to drive the results you know the portfolio of iot solutions and platforms and services that it offers across various industries you know from edge technologies to the gateways to the uh, iot data and bring that and the insights and the that it can help build uh, within the iot framework the azure iot framework is a very mature methodology and e info chips and microsoft have you know decades of experience of helping enterprise customers you saw that in louis's presentation some of the customer base that we reference there Uh, with names you know very mature and you know one of the questions that came up what is the investment versus roi uh, that you see it is very different for different uh, different industries for different applications but the roi is very large some of the customers now today uh, when they move to a, say for example a subscription based model uh, their the revenue from the subscription is much higher than their revenue from selling the devices you know the per pay per use model is an example uh, or the subscription model is actually overtaking the device revenue in lot of our customer cases in case of uh, you know the elevator example the value is helping reduce the field you know predictive maintenance re- reducing the field service costs in a significant manner is the value that is brought through this uh, you know connected devices solutions and the insights that it gets to you so as arrow uh, one of the things that uh, uh, we want to sh- showcase to you is arrow offers truly a uh, services at a global scale and services across different areas and i want to talk about what are the services so when you talk about products there is a Flu of products that are custom built products, uh, customer centric uh, services that we offer uh, from you know security, scalability, uh, and we offer a lot of products uh, and components that might be used to build your device story. Uh, we also have certain branded products for broadcast, security, visual media, and we also have a lot of reference designs and architectures from a product and device point of view. Arrow has over 800 suppliers that we work with very deep domain knowledge within embedded processors DSP GPUs uh, CPUs on that side so that's on the product side of the story in terms of the services around fulfillment uh, you know we ensure that the right uh, services are offered to you and we we will provide you the best of class uh, services along with even financing options that can be supported in some cases to simplify your supply chain services to help you with buffered stock uh, and uh, you know additional services that might be required in terms of design services uh, we offer you know engineering design services to shorten your time to market uh, through a lot of collaboration we bring in the experts uh, from each engineering team we leverage our partnership uh, with microsoft to help solve some technical challenges and uh, uh, questions that you might have and help you to accelerate that whole i from idea to production kind of journey for you and and we can help you with the development we can help you with the first article we can help you with certification and any r&d that might be required uh, in terms of manufacturing services uh, arrow does offer complete planning and integrating your product helping you to build it at scale uh, both from a hardware software and cloud integration uh, bomb 
management and bomb cost optimization uh, in that area and also truly ma handling your entire manufacturing if that's what you would like us to do. In terms of managed services, uh, full turnkey services that can complement your internal strengths. So wherever there are gaps, <clears throat> they can we can step in. Uh, we have a dedicated global, global teams that can offer <clears throat> data center asset management, uh, remote monitoring of devices, managing your spares, providing you support services, including your 24 by seven knock services or L2 support uh, that would, might be required. In terms of disposition services, this is at the end of the life cycle where we can take on your data democratization <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and we can help you with refurbishing. We can help you with warranty, uh, RMA, and any disposition services that are required. So truly, Aero does offer you, know, you truly end-to-end -end services from the product life cycle, from the entry to the end of life cycle. And that's what we offer. So one last polling question we would like to pop, pop up here uh, as we move to the last slide. Uh, in terms of how we could potentially help, where do you see potentially in for chips Arrow, Microsoft helping you? So uh, uh, if you can please pu pull up the polling question, thank you. We are offering you know multiple ways to engage. One is you know offer a one hour free consultation uh, on business transformation. We could do even a half day workshop uh, on business transformation at premise if that makes sense or if you are not ready yet and you would just like us to keep you updated on products and services on a regular basis, we can uh, include you in our mailing list uh, or if you just want to reach out to us whenever you want to. So if you want to pick one of them, uh, would be appreciated so that we know how we should engage and continue to uh, you know, bring this forward. <clears throat> so with that, back to you, Louis. Uh, to, uh, sorry, uh, Philip, to bring it to close. Thank you so much, Parag and Luis, for a really informative webinar. And thank you for everybody who attended. Uh, we are uh, running master classes around the connected uh, products and IoT space every <laughs> Thursday. Uh, so we would love for you to join us on those. And you can keep up uh, with everything at readwritelabs.com. Um, I think right now uh, we have about a minute if there are any other uh, questions that we uh, that we want to address beforehand. So, so somebody asked, uh, it would be it would be interesting to know about the ROI, for example, expenses and investments versus benefits. Uh, do I do either of you want to speak to that? So uh, in, yeah. in, in that case, oh. Go ahead, Barack, if you want. Yeah. No, go ahead. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. So I, I was just going to mention about the specific samples. You can find and, and you can work together uh, InfoChips, Arrow, and Microsoft. We have a lot of experience. We've seen a lot of customers, okay? So uh, the ROI will be see, could be seen in different ways depending on your business and what is your goal, okay? So uh, Parag mentioned some samples about 75% uh, reduced service calls, 42% increase in customer orders, or uh, reduced response time, um, for example, in, in the case of solutions uh, like the Johnson's Control, uh, avoiding more than $300,000 in hourly downtime costs, or uh, increasing yields in the agriculture for 30%. So in all of the different scenarios, we always help you look for that, those type of uh, benefits in your business. That's why, in my opinion, one of the recommendations is the next step, I would go and ask for a business model transformation workshop, either if it's one hour conversation with us or if it's a larger, larger engagement that will help us work together in identifying your goal, your strategy, your challenges, and how through this IoT and just by connecting these devices, how we can help you leverage and compete in a better uh, situation and, and providing innovation 
to your customers uh, or, or reducing your costs, uh, identifying these new business opportunities, okay? Thank you, Luis. And thank you, everybody. Again, we will be sending out a recording and slides for this presentation um, within a few days. Uh, so look out for those. Uh, thank you all. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.